YouTube. What's going on? Nick here from The Real Hero Show, as always, presenting you the newest episode of Dexter New Blood, episode 7, entitled Skin of Her Teeth. Full disclosure, there will be spoilers, so if you haven't yet seen this episode of Dexter, go check it out, come back here, hear what I have to say. If you are new here and want to help support me in this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for free. Hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm and hit the bell notification to get notified of all my future content here. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this episode. It starts off from the ending of the previous episode, of course, where Angela has called Dexter because she needs Dexter, not Jim. Dexter uses his skills and talents at being a blood splatter analyst from Miami Metro, as Angela points out to him. Dexter figures out that Iris was shot from behind with a rifle. Where have we seen that before? <gasps> Kurt Caldwell. Interestingly enough, there's no blood there under the rocks, which means there's more to the story. Dexter says that Iris was alive when, when buried, but as we find out later, I don't think Iris was or barely alive at that point. The other interesting point, Dexter being, you know, a wise individual in this sort of, you know, crime scene, him being an analyst and, and knowing what to look for, he finds human skin on a tooth of Iris's, which could seemingly find some DNA and lead them in the right direction. From Angela's point of view, she finally tells us that Iris has been gone for 25 years. The other interesting point where Dexter's trying to kind of close the gap in the awkwardness of uh, his relationship with Angela. He says, well, if you've got a theory, you know, my sister Deb used to you know, bounce some theories off me. Which that, that, that line right there is somewhat of a crucial moment because he's, you know, again, he's, he's informed Angela more about his past life. And even though Angela found out from Angel Batista who Deborah Morgan was, and now that she knows who Dexter Morgan is, she's kind of gotten a little bit more of a piece of the puzzle that Dexter has so, so willingly told her Angela spits out her theory to Dexter and says it's Kurt Caldwell and, and obviously we get some inner monologue from from Dexter at one point in my notes as I'm watching this I thought to myself this would be a prime moment for Dexter to say hey by the way I kind of followed Molly and Kurt to this cabin which he obviously does later on in this episode he fills her in with more info about that cabin and Molly being lured there by Kurt. But the big thing about this is when she goes or when, when they go to the cabin, it's, it's empty. There's nothing there. Everything has been cleaned out. There's scrapes on the wall. There's, you know, a trail of things being moved in the, in the dirt and the snow. And the other interesting thing is that, Angela states that she knows this land better than anyone and has never once seen this place. So maybe she doesn't know her home territory as well as she thinks. Um, which, I, again, I, I wondered if anyone else in the Seneca tribe might have known about it or seen it and not really kind of giving it and giving it any any thought or uh, or maybe they just didn't really think much of it. Um, and moving on with the whole ordeal in the cabin and Molly, you know, Molly gets scolded a little bit later uh, from Angela, right? Because you, you didn't tell me you were going. I asked you not to go. She goes anyways. And it could have been a bad situation. Molly would have been the next victim, the next missing person. And then what? I wonder if that would have weighed a little bit more on, uh, uh, on on uh, on Angela. We're gonna go over to Kurt here, where 
Harrison obviously has started to work at the truck stop. Dexter doesn't want him to go work there. He doesn't really care. There was an awkward breakfast. You kind of feel like Harrison is drifting away and moving toward Kurt. And Kurt surprises Dexter at the truck stop. Kurt has no words about Matt or Molly when questioned about Dexter. And sure enough, we see Angela uh, and Logan come up. They arrest Kurt. Kurt tries to play dumb about Iris when they're back at the station. But then Angela kind of hits him with some fine points. And I felt like th they were really on to something here, or at least seemly on to something. Because Kurt asks for a lawyer, and usually you don't ask for a, lo a lawyer. Um, I mean, you should always ask for a lawyer. <laughs> um, but as willingly as he was to play dumb, as soon as he asks for a lawyer, it's sort of like, well, you, now I know your hand better because, A, you were playing it off, and all of a sudden now you want a lawyer? Hmm, which is which? And, and you know, we get this weird story about his father, and I, I do think, again, there's there's a bit of a connection in terms of uh, the, the male protagonist's in this and, and and antagonist in this story here where you've got Dexter who uh, growing up as a child right uh, in the beginning of the original show uh, with his brother in the in the truck uh, cargo uh, I can't think of that the shipment container there we go <laughs> um, you know as his mother is slaughtered and covered in blood the blood has made an effect on him and has created this dark passenger within him. Kurt, when he was a kid, would go on these truck rides with his father, and his dad, being a, a trucker, would pick up and abuse women violently, and he would hear it, not so much really see it, but his father was pissed because his, his wife left, left him. And, and I'm like, well, yeah, this is exactly how Kurt is all screwed up in the head much like Dexter, and ironically, they're both serial killers. Even though Dexter is supposed to be this vigilante who stops people like Kurt, he can't really say that someone shouldn't stop Dexter as well, like the actual law enforcement, which I think will inevitably happen at some point. Or will it? Now, this statement that he makes with the AG there, I believe it was, uh, at the station, uh, he's saying, oh no, it was my dad that picked up Iris. And I'm thinking that wouldn't make sense timeline wise. Like you, you, your dad been, would have to have been super old because I don't think Kurt is the same age as Angela. Uh, look, Angela looks much, much younger. Um, uh, Kurt looks at least 20 years older. Um, and uh, you figure her dad's or his dad was much older than that. So again, uh, it, uh, that's why I'm like, why, why is no one asking about the age of this? Uh, you know, like, why aren't they actually connecting the years or talking about it? So that, that was one thing that really bothered me about this and uh, that part in, the, in this episode, um, because I felt like that would have really started to narrow in a little bit more and make Kurt more nervous and definitely see if he should lawyer up big time. Uh, but we know he's lying because as he's saying this story to Angela and on record here uh, in front of the video recorder, we're seeing what's actually happening in that moment when Kurt was younger and picks up Iris and he's like, no, you should go go home. I'll bring you home. And she's like, no, fuck you. Don't, I don't want to go home. And then she tries to get out and then Kurt kind of goes all crazy and then the just as yeah, she's running down the the road he takes out the same rifle that he still has magically and shoots her right in the back same spot as we saw in the cave which is where she bled out and obviously you're not going to find blood on that road all these years later but we know kurt lied yeah I mean, we know kurt lied i think as soon as the beginning of the episode um but the other 
screwed up part about this is when they're doing the DNA test and when it comes back, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's revealed that only 67% match and then 33%, you know, reasonable doubt it's not, which is very interesting because it's, it's two thirds it is and one third it's not even though we see in the flashback scene that Iris bites his hand and then Iris even goes, Hey, what's that, uh, what's that scar on your hand? Oh, you know, I work with my hands a lot, sweetheart. You know, again, all the pieces are there and we as an audience knows it's sort of just waiting to find out how it really plays out in their world in this show, which may be disappointing or it may be fulfilling. Uh, we've only got three episodes left to actually see what ends up, happening and if this really does lead into a season two which i I definitely think it will at this point uh if these are going to be the same characters i have no idea yet um but chris set free and we find out a little bit more as to how far his reach is even while he's in while while he's in, in jail right um because harrison He helps this trucker that goes there and makes his truck look all nice and new. And then says, hey, by the way, tell your dad, Jim, um, got a note for him. So right when he gets home to, to Dexter, he gives the note to him. It's this screw, which at first I thought it was like something that might have gone to the assault rifle. Um, but it wasn't. And that was like at first glance, uh, you know, and the, we, we know up until this part, there's more that's just, get, you know, continuously getting screwed up with, with Harrison as well. He's struggling and he really needs his father just to come clean. Right. Um, you know, when Harrison's at school, he tries to talk to Audrey, but Audrey being a very stand up, uh, and real person, says you know what what was that whole thing about you breaking that kid's elbow you know and and she knows that more about harrison than than anyone else as to what harrison feels like doing you know he feels like hurting everyone and that's kind of serious because i think audrey is smarter and smarter than he thinks she is and she's starting to put these pieces together much like she's she listened to dex uh, sorry listen to dex uh (laughs) listen to Harrison about saying my father is not who we, who you think he is. And as she told her mother that Angela starts putting things together and going, Oh, wait a second. I know who you are now. And I'm going to prove it. The other interesting part about this whole, you know, scene, I'll get to you in just a moment with Harrison and Dexter, um, as, uh, you know, we get to the end of this episode. Um, but a couple other interesting parts that uh, you know Dexter again has to deal with is getting to Kurt, finding out how much Kurt knows about him and about everything else, and uh, I don't know how this really happened. I mean, we see how it's happened, but he lets the sheep go, and uh, the other officer um, <laughs> he uh, goes to get the sheep back heard the sheep right and Dexter turns the lights off at the police station goes to the jail cell that Kurt's in and they have a little heart to heart um and I think the idea of Dexter trying to taunt Kurt backfired and Kurt ended up taunting Dexter and much like Dexter realizes that it seems like we're playing chess but Kurt's um, you know, one more move ahead of you than you think you are. So I, I honestly think this is just because Dexter is is rusty, right? He's been laying low, not really being in the game uh, for a, you know, a decade. Meanwhile, Kurt's been killing the you know these 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 girls for for years, uh, and so he's had a lot of practice, and he hasn't really slowed down since uh, since Iris, because Iris you know has was my guess you know the the first one right so 25 years of this non-stop 
It is a hell of a run. It's a sickening run, but it's a hell of a run. Meanwhile, Dexter had, you know, a solid run when he was in Miami, but at the same time, he's had some time off. And he says a couple of times, you know, earlier uh, this season in these episodes that he's rusty, he's making mistakes, uh, and he made quite a few, quite a few of them uh, over the course of these seven episodes. Uh, the particular one was when he thought to figure out what to do with Matt's body and says, you know, that night, or Kurt says, you know, that night when you picked me up in this, uh, from the bar, it's almost like it was snowing. Except when I got home, I realized it wasn't snow. It was ash. And that right there, we know, means Kurt went to the furnace looked inside and found some titanium rods or titanium screws and so Dexter starts putting the pieces together and at that point I'm thinking holy crap Dexter his secret is has been uncovered by Kurt Kurt knows the truth and I don't know who else Kurt has told but you know Dexter's behind the game at this point Right. Even even while Dexter tries to snoop around in Kurt's office, it's like he he's trying to find more evidence, and he and he does. He finds a, a five thousand dollar check for Elric Kane, which I think is the the trucker the trucker's name, the one that helped, uh, the one that Harrison helped, and and the one that gave Harrison the little note package, and the one who uh, sneaks up on uh on dexter dexter obviously is now even more confirmed with himself that he needs to to kill kurt uh but also the event that happens with with harrison when harrison uh essentially is about to get jumped by uh these four four uh high schoolers from the other school from the uh, wrestling kid that he, whose arm he broke uh we see that Harrison takes out his uh, straight, uh, straight blade, uh, straight blade knife, and uh, makes a swipe at one of the guys and cuts like his his uh, varsity jacket. Um, and and then De- Dexter's right there to to stop him. And then the other kids leave, and and Harrison's you know kind of hysterical. He's saying I'm so fucked up and I you know I need help and 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 it was like a, a it was definitely a cry a plea for help and he wants to know why and he even says like you were there like I get it you know w- of what happened but Harrison's just looking for clarity he's looking for answers to you know help him with his 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 problems that he's had to grow up with fatherless as well and even you know hannah being a stepmom she doesn't know the whole story she's not one to really give him the answers that he's looking for uh and again dexter gets it through his his head that he needs to tell harris and everything and i'm like thank you thank you dexter you finally realize what you need to do to kurt you finally realize what you need to do for your son and just as he puts those pieces together in his mind, we see him stop, look in the reflection of the window, and we see Kurt's minion, the tracker guy, er- Elric Kane, you know, gag him, and it cuts to black, and we can kind of hear some more struggling from Dexter. I know there's the preview for next week, which I'm not really going to go into, but I do think that Dexter is going to be in some shit. I, I I think this is, again, the best episode thus far. Rating-wise, I'm going to give this a solid... Um, I might get a little granular here, so bear with me, but I, I'm going to give it like maybe like an 8. At least an 8. But I want to say like maybe an 8.3. Uh, some things, again, bothered me with this episode, but I think for the most part... It was pretty well done. Uh, I think the acting was well done by all the main characters, right? Because we also know that Molly is starting to put things together with 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 Angela about Dexter, and and again, it's got it's got Angela thinking more. 
And I wonder if next episode, because Dexter's missing, Harrison doesn't know where he is, Angela starts putting his pieces together, and maybe he comes to the aid of, of Dexter, but is like, listen, if I'm going to help you with this, I need, need to know more of the truth about you, Dexter Morgan. And at the same time, you know, I wonder if it's in this next episode that Dexter starts to tell more about about uh, his past and about everything for Harrison's sake. Uh, and again, if, if this is on, the only season we're getting from Dexter New Blood, I don't know uh, what they're going to do for, for Dexter's sake, if he's going to continue to live. Uh, if he gets killed off, you know, I, I don't know. Uh if, what they're gonna do about a spinoff for Harrison? I, I don't think they'll they'll do something like that, um, but it would be somewhat interesting uh, to kind of carry on for maybe maybe at least another season or two. Um, but what do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this episode? Did you think it was the best one of the season thus far? Uh, I know I've talked, uh, so I've spoken with a, a few people who uh, have really enjoyed this episode uh, and said it was the best one as well, but I'd like to hear more comments. Uh, and uh, what do you hope will happen at the end of this season? I have some questions, but I think with these last three episodes, we might get them answered, but to quickly shoot them off, uh, will Dexter live? Will Dexter die? Will Harrison live? Will Harrison die? Will Kurt get arrested and stay in jail? Or will Kurt fall prey to... Dexter's uh, dark passenger uh, on his table. Will Angela and Dexter get back together? Will Molly end up doing a podcast on this whole scenario here with the with the missing girls? You tell me. So, uh, end of this weekend is the Christmas weekend, so I will do my best to get this next video out on time hopefully next tuesday and uh yeah thanks for the support again hit that like button subscribe button bell for all of our notifications on future video here with me and until next time I will see you.